Welcome to CH2. I'm Rob Adams and I'm going to take you through this building. This is Australia's most advanced purpose-built commercial office building. It has two major features. It reduces its energy consumption by up to 80% and it also provides a healthy indoor living environment for the occupants of the building. One of the simplest and most effective features of this building is its ability to in fact open up these windows at night. It's called a night purge. If we open those windows for four hours at a night during the summer, we use the cool air that flows in to cool down the concrete ceilings above me. This provides us with a saving of about 20% of the energy in the building. CH2 does not use conventional technology to cool the building. Whereas conventional buildings use air, CH2 uses water. It cools its water passively by lowering water through 15 meters on five shower towers on the southern facade of the building. That building is taken at 13 degrees down to the basement where it's stored in three large tanks. In those large tanks we have 10,000 balls, similar to this one, that contain a phase change material. That material freezes at 15 degrees. When we need cool energy back in the building, we then pass the water back over the balls, defrosting them and bringing them into these panels here. The water then drops cool air back into the volume, making the indoor air environment the correct temperature. While we're on water, the building saves 70% of its water by mining the sewer. In the basement of the building, we have a sewer mine that draws sewerage out of the street from the drain, purifies that, and then using the water internally within the building. The water is used for cooling. It is also used for irrigation and for flushing the toilets. One of the design features of CH2 is the way we've actually utilized natural and artificial lighting. We've maximized the use of natural lighting by positioning the windows at the highest point in the vault in the roof. With artificial lighting, we've set the light at 150 lux rather than the normal 350 lux that is used in conventional buildings. But we've supplemented that with task lamps at each of the workstations so that people work within a good light environment while minimizing the light and energy used within CH2. One of the most difficult aspects in designing any building is how to keep the hot afternoon sun off the western facade. What we've used is recycled louvers here that tilt in the afternoon and close down to protect that western facade. We can use a very natural way of producing a very environmental solution for the western elevation. Other aspects of the building are its passive energy systems the solar voltaic system that is on the roof that generates solar energy, and the solar hot water system that generates the hot water for the building. In combination with the passive systems, we have systems like cogeneration, which is gas-generated electricity, a clean energy, that provides us with up to 10% of our energy. The turbines help evacuate air out of the building. They also generate a small amount of electricity which is put back into the grid. Some of the general features of CH2 or the way we've tried to replicate the leaf area on the site. Through the use of plants on the roof garden here and on the northern facade, not only do they protect the building, but they provide an equal amount of leaf area to that which would have been on the site originally. The second major feature of this building is the way it has been designed to keep the indoor air environment a healthy environment for the occupants. This is the major cost saving of any building. Too often buildings have disregarded the most expensive item in the building, namely the people. CH2 operates on 100% fresh air. The fresh air is drawn down from the roof of the building, down these ducts, which look like the wall behind me, and under the floor and rise up through registers in the floor. The temperature of the air is 21 degrees and my body and the computer heats up that air and allows it to warm and rise. As it warms and rises, it exits via the slots between the ce uh, concrete ceilings here and is carried down in the belly of those which is a duct to the northern facade where it's evacuated out at the roof. We get two air changes every hour. This has been shown to contribute to about a 10.9% improvement in productivity and well-being, equal to over $2 million a year in savings to the council. Two other aspects that provide a healthy indoor environment are the use of plants. In the building, 
there's one plant for every occupant of a floor of the building. They help clean the air and add a, a refinement to the air quality. It's interesting to note that in conventional buildings, these plants would need to be changed every two months. But the plants in CH2 have been going for 18 months and are still in a healthy condition. Another aspect are the materials we've used in the building. None of the materials have any off-gassing. They are natural and have been, in many cases, recycled from a previous life. This means that you're not getting added to the air impurities that give people headaches and make them feel uncomfortable in the working environment. The carpets are recyclable and there's been no excessive use of paint within the building and most of the materials have been kept natural. The question often asked is how much does all of this cost? Well the building cost 52 million to build and about 11 million of that was used for the environmental and indoor air quality features. The payback period on that is quite interesting. While energy prices in Australia are still quite low and are projected to rise, they only produce about $360,000 saving a year. But the major saving comes from the indoor living environment. A recent survey done by Adrian Lehman, a UK expert, showed that we were saving on a productivity and well-being basis 10.9% of our staff's time. This equates to well over $2 million. On this basis, the building will pay back all the $11 million within a period of five to six years. The economic argument is no longer an impediment for making your building environmentally friendly and the indoor air environment friendly to the people who work within it. I hope you've enjoyed your journey around the building of the future. And I think you maybe have learnt that the buildings of the future aren't that frightening. In fact, it could be a far better existence for us all. Ground Thank you. Floor.